you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. This piece of rock cost a mining engineer his reputation and almost cost me my life. It began a short time ago, just two days before I started on my vacation. Sorry to trouble you, Captain. There's a character out here that says he's been solid. Send him to the psycho ward. Oh, no, sir. He's not a nut. Something about a gold mine swindle. A uh, sucker born every minute and two to take it away from him. All right, send him in. Yes, sir. Evan Davis, you old son of a gun. How are you, Brad? Nice to see you. By golly, you still kept that boy's figure. Well, that's about all I've kept. I don't see any fat on that long stomach of yours. <laughs> Tell me, how's the mining uh, engineering profession treating you? Not so good. I think I'd have done better to become a detective instead of an engineer. You know, and sometimes I wish I'd followed up the mining engineering. Uh, sit down, won't you? Tell me, how's Rosemary and Gwen? Fine. Except you wouldn't know Gwen. She's nine years old. No. Has it been that long? It sure has. Look, Brad. I'm in trouble. Serious trouble. Yes? I've been flim-flam, bunkoed. You're looking at a 24-carat, quadruple-plated, copper-riveted sucker. You? Oh, what do you mean? I've been salted. I got my company out on a limb for a $25,000 option on a gold mine that hasn't got an ounce of gold in it. And the company thinks it's collusion? Well, I haven't said so in so many words, but I'll never be able to get another job as a mining engineer unless I can clear myself. Well, do you know who did it? Yes. An old mining engineer with a kind, benevolent face and the most honest baby blue eyes you'd ever want to see. He's known affectionately by his fellow townsmen as Dad Miller. And he got the 25000 And my reputation. Hmm. Do you know how he sold it? That's just that I don't. Oh, I know he used gold chloride solution, but I don't know how he managed it. Did you take your own specimens yourself? Yes. And I used my own equipment. I carried the sacks of samples in a heavy cowhide bank messenger zippered bag. The old man never had a chance to touch it, put his hands on it, or even get near it. But somehow, he managed to put enough chloride of gold solution on those samples to show an assay report averaging $400 to the ton. Well, it would only take a few drops of gold chloride in each sample sack to show that. I know, but he had to get those few drops in there. Well, he just couldn't have done it. It's impossible. Hmm. Where did this take place? Up in the mountains, a few miles above Eureka Springs. That's on the Tawui River, isn't it? Yeah, it runs right past the town. That's supposed to be one of the best trout streams in the state. It is. I caught some beautiful rainbows while I was up there getting rooked. And Wolf's Head Lake up above there, stacked with German browns and speckles. Mm, I'm starting on my vacation day after tomorrow. I was going up to Selden, but... Do you suppose if I set myself up as a pigeon that this Dad Miller would make a try for me? I'm sure of it. All you have to do is make a noise like ready money and he'll be there with bells on. Where's the best place to contact him? At the Blue Diamond Saloon in Eureka Springs. He drops in there every afternoon for a couple of beers. I'll have to get a sample outfit from you. I don't know what's happened to mine. It's been such a long time since I've done any prospecting. Oh, don't worry about that. I'll fix you up with everything you need. Brad, I can't tell you how grateful I am now, to wait you. wait a minute. Don't get your hopes up too high. If this old codger was tricky enough to fool you, I'm not so sure that I can crack this case. But I'm willing to try. Now, if you'll just fill me in on the main points, I'll know what to be on the lookout for. Because these crooks always follow the same pattern once they find a nice angle. Well, he wrote to the company and said he had a good prospect. And asked for an engineer to come up to check it. The company sent me. I took three sets of samples on three different occasions. And as I told you, I never let those samples get out of my sight for a minute. I even personally took them over to Rimrock and had them assayed there. And later on, the company sent some of the other samples up to government assayers in San Francisco. Always the same report, right around $400 to the ton. And so, on my recommendation, 
The company paid this old crook $25,000 for an option. They sent a crew up there with diamond drills to make a preliminary exploration. The crew sent back over six tons of cores and face specimens, and there wasn't a grain of gold in the entire six tons. Every assay came back negative. They didn't even show color. And you're sure that he didn't have any opportunity to tamper with your original samples, the ones that assayed around 400? I'm positive of it. That's the point that's... Well, it's driving me nuts. If I'd been careless or if there'd been the slightest chance of a slip-up, it'd be different. But I wasn't careless. The only thing I can figure is the old crook must be a magician. You know, that's probably the answer. What do you mean? You've seen magicians perform the impossible on the stage, haven't you? Well, I've seen them do things that looked impossible. Yes, the magician's art depends upon one little thing, misdirection. You think you see what's happening, but you don't. But I never even let him get near the bag. You can't put gold chloride on samples without getting near them. A heavy cowhide bag with a padlock on it. And besides, Brad... I know, I know, but there was a slip up somewhere along the line. There had to be. Now, you stick around where I can reach you by the telephone for the next few days. I may need your help. Uh, what about the Bureau of Mines? They sent a field engineer up there to investigate. He ran into a blank wall. I see. Well, bring me the tools and things I'll need here at the office sometime tomorrow. I'll have them here within an hour. Okay, and keep your chins up. Braddock's on the trail. So long. Things are kind of quiet around here, aren't they? Quiet? Judas! My friend, this town just isn't quiet, it's dead. Old Ricky Mortis has already said in. If it wasn't for an occasional trout fisherman like yourself, I'd starve to death. Which I'm gonna do anyway. Gold all played out, huh? No. It's more gold in those hills has ever been taken out. Gold's still there. Trouble is nobody knows where to find it. You a mining man? No, not exactly. Although I did take a couple of years of geology and mining engineering. No, I'm in the investment business. Investments in the development of mining property. Going to be around with us long? Oh, a couple of weeks if the fish keep biting. Well, I'll be around here to serve you anytime you get thirsty. They ain't got nothing to drink over in that hotel except in coffee. You can call that stuff coffee. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Jeb, you ain't finished your beer. You drink it. What's the matter with it? You got a bug in it or something? Come in. Howdy, sir. I hope I ain't disturbing you none. Oh, not at all. I, I happened to see a light from down on the street. And I thought maybe he wasn't in bed, so I thought I'd come up and have a little talk with you. Well, won't you come in? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Miller's my name, sir. Folks in these parts call me Dad. Dad Miller. Braddock's my name, Mr. Miller. Yeah. Oh, uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, caught any fish yet? Well, I just got here this afternoon. I haven't had a chance. I'm going to take a shot at him in the morning. I stopped into the Blue Diamond this evening, and my pal Sam Kelsey tells me that you might be interested in mining and development. I'm more interested in trout fishing. I'm on my vacation. <laughs> well, I ain't a gambling man, but uh, I'll bet... I could show you something up in the mountains that would make you forget all about trout fishing. That is, if you're interested in gold. I'm always interested in gold. But why did you come to me? Well, the folks around here are a sly lot. They think I'm an old fool, but uh, the laugh's gonna be on them when the truth comes out. Well, what is the truth? Well, I don't want you to take my word for it. All I want you to do is to see for yourself. I'll take you up there in my Jeep and let you take out some samples from any part of the vein you want to. Then all you gotta do is sit back and let the assayer give you the answer. What does it run? Runs about 400 to the ton. And if it don't run that much, I'll eat this here hat without cream or sugar. Is it free milling? No, sir. It's sulfide. It looks all the world like bull quartz. Has to be processed. <laughs> That's why I'm not operating it myself. It'll cost about eight to ten thousand to uh, lay in a road up there. 
Then we have to put in a compressor and uh, pipe some water up there to hold down the dust. <laughs> That'll cost another 15 or 20,000. But when we get it set, we'll have a bonanza. Why? Why, I've got over a thousand ton exposed in my little gopher hole right now. That sounds good. Almost too good to be true. Seeing is believing. That's right. <laughs> you got any equipment with you to take out some samples? Oh, I got enough to make out. I always bring along a little gear when I go fishing in case I want to pick up a specimen. Good. Always like a man to use his own equipment. Then he don't have no suspicions or, or doubts in his mind. All right, Mr. Miller, what time? Eight o'clock too early? That's all right. Pick you up here at eight o'clock in the morning with my Jeep. <laughs> I'll bring the lunch. All you got to do is sit back and, and ride in style. <laughs> Uh, I, I hope we can keep this just between ourselves. I, I don't want to start a stampede up there until I can stake out some more claims. If you uh, handle it right, I'll uh, stake out a claim for you, too. Uh, don't you worry about me, Mr. Miller. You can depend upon me to play it close to my chest. Good, good. It's great to do business with an intelligent man. Good night, sir. I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you in the morning. Good night, Mr. Miller. see a man sample of mine. Fill him deep and find out what's really in there. It's the only way to make a real preliminary test. <laughs> yes, sir. You, uh, you want me to get some mud for you to tamper with? Oh, thank you. I brought some clay along with me. <laughs> By jingoes, you certainly know your business, young fella. <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna assault you. I'd like to see them try. Uh, they'd never get away with it. Not with you using your own tools, your own powder, and, and your own mud. <laughs> Those are neat little bags you got, too, to put your specimens in. <laughs> Tamper proof, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, that ought to hold it. Mr. Miller, after you. Yes, sir. There she blows. Uh, while we're waiting for those powder fumes to blow away, we might as well have our lunch. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. Yes, Hope you like fried chicken. I sure do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? Too salty? No, it's all right. That cook over at the Elite Cafe always did have a heavy hand with salt. <laughs> but uh, salt's good for you. Show me a man who eats plenty of salt, and I'll show you a healthy man. <laughs> Let's have some potato salad. All right. Here we are. Boy, that cook sure does have a heavy hand with the salt. Yeah, <laughs> it's mighty salty, all right. Uh, how'd you like a nice drink of spring water? I sure could use it. <sighs> Well, I'll be hog-tied, throat and landed. That no-good cook forgot to fill my canteen. Just goes to show you if you want anything done right, you gotta do it yourself. No water. No. Well, uh, never mind. There, there's the sweetest swing you ever saw about three miles down the, the road. And when I get back to town, I'll give that cook a bawling out he'll never forget. I'll pick up the specimens and be right with you. <laughs> and I'll have the Jeep all packed up and ready to go when you come out. Fine. All set? All set. We'll open a cloud of dust. 
Mr. Braddock, this time I won't disappoint you about that cool drink of sparkling spring water. <laughs> Come on. Springs down this way about 20 paces. Here we are, Mr. Braddock. Here we are. There we are. There's nothing like a cool drink of spring water when a man's really thirsty. Well, sir, you still got plenty of time to get to Imrock before the assay offices close. There are five or six of them there, so you can take your pick. They're all good. Now, you're sure this stuff will assay around $400 a ton? Positive. Well, this I've got to see. <laughs> You'll see, all right. <laughs> You'll see. Hello? Oh, hello, Brad. Were they good? Every one of them. I paid an extra fee to have them rush through a trial assay, and they all came out the same. Averaging around $400. Well, from your description, it's the identical tunnel. And I know positively there isn't a grain of gold in there. By the way, when Miller took you up there for those samples, did uh, he offer to furnish the lunch? Uh-huh, and was it very salty? I know you don't salt gold mines with salt. But in this case, I'm not so sure. Now, I got a hunch. I'm going up there tomorrow and pick up some more samples. Now, this is what I want you to do. You're familiar with the layout up there, so... I had a feeling that my bag had been tampered with. So the next time I went up to make another test, I made sure that somebody would be in for a big surprise. Don't have to worry about salt this time, Mr. Good. I made these sandwiches myself. Hope you like corned beef. There's nothing wrong with corned beef. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to double check my little prospect, Mr. Braddock. <laughs> Man can't be too careful in cases like this. When it involves money. Real money, I mean. You didn't put red pepper on this, did you? Me? No. No, I, I don't think so. Does taste the mite peppery, though. <laughs> it's funny. Just the way it came out of the can. <laughs> Maybe you'd like a drink of water. Yeah, thanks. I got this out of my own well. <laughs> there you are. What's the matter? Don't you like the taste? It's sulfur water. <laughs> Takes a little time to get used to it. Took me about 10 years. I'm mighty fond of it, though, now. I'm afraid it would take me a lot longer than 10 years. Well, if you don't like the taste, we'll drive down to the spring and get you some fresh water. <laughs> Let's go. What's that? What's the matter? It's my eyes. I'm blind. I can't see nothing. It's my eyes. Your eyes will be all right in a few minutes. The effects of tear gas don't last long. So you're a cop. That's right. Stinking, sneaking cop. You better reach, Mr. Copper, before I blow you in two. <laughs> and now I'm going to teach you it ain't healthy to go squirting tear gas in my... Uh, none of that, Jeff. Why? Because I have other plans for Mr. Braddock. You get in the Jeep and drive. Come on. Get the car. I'll keep him covered. I don't get it. What's the sense of fooling around like this? Why don't we just knock him in the head and throw him over in a gulch somewhere? Because that's murder. Shut up. He's right. That is murder. And murder's against the law. Even more against the law than salt in the mine. Well, if you think I'm going to do a 10-year stretch just because you're too chicken to put this guy away, you're nuts. Nobody ain't going to do no 10-year stretch. Because Mr. Braddock ain't going to tell anyone we salted a mine. I'm not? No, sir. Not unless you do it with a Ouija board. What's that? One of them gimmicks that they use to send messages back from the dear departed. I thought you said we weren't going to knock them off. We ain't. But mining is a dangerous occupation. And mines is dangerous places. Anything can happen in a mine. Anything at all. When a man gets himself killed in a mine, that's an accident, not murder. And accidents 
is legal. Very pretty, but you can't get away with it. I expected something like this, and Evan Davis and a deputy are on their way up here now. You're going to have to do a lot of explaining about this accident, no matter how you make it look. Yeah, and I suppose you're going to tell me that the United States Cavalry and uh, the Texas Rangers are on their way up here to save you. I'm not bluffing, Mr. Miller. Neither am I, Mr. Braddock. Okay, Jeff. Take him into the mine. Shoot, if you don't need that much powder. Yes, I do. I want a cave in, a real cave in. So it'll take a couple of weeks to dig him out of here. Where's the key? Take it. What? I would have sworn I left it here. I always leave it here. It's on the floor. Get your hands up. If you're looking for the ignition key, it's in my pocket. Where's Braddock? He's in the mine, collecting some more specimens. You seem to be in a hurry to get out of there. Sure we was. He's in there setting another fuse. He wants some more specimens for another assay. I think we'll go in and take a look. Better get the guns first. All right, get down and lead the way in. I ain't going in that tunnel. He's setting another fuse in there. And he's using more dynamite than, than makes sense to me. There's something wrong here. Don't go in there, you fool! syringe filled with gold chloride was injected into the bag like this. Uh, that's why your bull quartz assayed around $400 a ton. Miller managed to put too much salt in the food, and then he always arranged to have an empty canteen. Then he had Redder hiding out in the bushes down by the spring. It only took him a few seconds to inject the gold chloride into the sack and then duck back into the bushes again. And when they assayed it and the chloride burned away, the gold was left in the specimens. Simple but effective. Until I went back over every step three or four times, I forgot about that important few seconds the bag was out of my sight. The clue that put me back on the right track was the salty food. Well, these two won't be salting any more mines for a long time, especially with an attempted murder rap to face on top of grand larceny. Let's get started. I'm a pretty good judge of character, a policeman has to be. But old Dad Miller's innocent face and kind blue eyes would have fooled anyone. So always remember that in a confidence game, the crook rarely ever looks like the crook. If he did, he wouldn't be able to get your confidence. So always beware of anyone who approaches you with a story of easy money. Something for nothing. Remember, it could happen to you. <laughs>